Hey all dear sons, this is Prajesh Chaudhary, your quantum guru. In this video, I'll discuss two similar concepts and both involving a central concept that is the hyperbolic orbit uh, in central force motion and what is the angle of deviation, angle of a scattering in that. And for that, I'll take the case of a Rutherford scattering in nuclear physics and also the uh, in gravitation, uh, there is a central planet or the star and a comet escapes in a hyperbolic orbit and what is the angle of a scattering. Uh, both are similar thing. Uh, I'll do for the Rutherford scattering and then using the standard analogy between the electrostatics and gravitation, I'll just immediately write the corresponding formula for the case of gravitation. So here uh, we have a classical uh, a Rutherford scattering case in which there is a gold foil and alpha particles are bombarded. A very few just turn back and most of them crosses them and they because the nucleus has a positive charge and the alpha particle has also positive charge so they repel and uh, if the repulsion is there so they will follow hyperbolic orbit. So I have this fixed nucleus having a charge Q and uh, an alpha particle is bombarded from a large distance. Uh, in some cases in hypothetical question there could be some other particles so for the case of generality I am taking charge of alpha particle to be small q other, otherwise the charge is actually 2e. So the mass of the alpha particle is m and it is projected with a velocity v infinity. Why I am writing v infinity because right now the alpha particle is at a very large separation infinite separation from the nucleus like this and b is the impact parameter what is the impact parameter so at infinite separation the direction of line of motion uh, the perpendicular distance between a fixed nucleus to the line of motion uh, when it was projected from infinity that is called the impact parameter so this is b and now it will move because of the repulsion it will follow something this like this a hyperbolic orbit so what are the things conserved there are two things one is a coulomb repulsion that is a conservative force so mechanical energy will be conserved and because it is a central force motion torque about the fixed nucleus would be zero at any moment so angular momentum is conserved about that fixed nucleus so these two are the mechanical energy conservation and the angular momentum conservation will hold for the whole motion so this nucleus follows this uh, path hyperbolic path something like this and uh, at the initial separation initial moment the potential energy was zero kq by r r is infinite kinetic energy is half mv infinity square and finally after a very theoretically infinite time again it would be at infinite separation again potential energy would be zero so to conserve mechanical energy the kinetic energy would be the same as initial so a speed finally would again become v infinity and here the tangent would be like this and again from the same and from the conservation of angular momentum at this moment the angular momentum about the fixed nucleus is mv mv infinity into b so at in infinite separation also finally also the angular momentum to be the same the impact parameter again should be same so finally this is b and uh, this is the initial line of motion and this is the final line of motion the angle between them is the how much it has scattered or deviated that is angle of scattering and that is alpha and now we'll calculate that thing so first of all uh, we will calculate how much is the uh, change in momentum of this particle so initial momentum magnitude is mv infinity final momentum magnitude is also mv infinity and alpha is the angle of scattering so p initial is equal to p final is equal to mv infinity so change in momentum is equal to vector is equal to p final momentum minus p initial momentum this is the p initial momentum vector and this is the p final momentum vector this is and that is their uh, difference delta p p f minus p i 
from the usual uh, vector law of uh, differences this delta p would be the angle between p i and p f is alpha so delta p would be uh, square root of p i square plus p f square minus 2 p i p f cos alpha and if you simplify that thing you will get that to be 2 m v infinity sine alpha by 2 and this is the delta p direction so because this p i and p f are same so this angle and this angle would be the same so let me call that these two angles say a uh, phi so delta p would be like that if this is phi so that remaining angle will also be phi like that this is phi and this is phi if this is phi so this is phi so this angle would be how much uh, this is phi plus alpha and you can see this is phi plus alpha so the change in momentum would be along this direction that direction i have i, I have uh, taken as a reference line and now i will uh, calculate delta p by another method by uh, impulse method and equate the two delta p by the two and from there we will get that alpha and you see also this is a phi and this is phi and this is alpha so 2 phi plus alpha is equal to 180 degree so phi is equal to 90 minus alpha by 2 and again this is the same diagram now at a general moment here the uh, this charge q is here so the force by the central fixed nucleus would be along this direction repulsive force and suppose that is at a general distance small r and angular position with respect to the initial uh, uh, sorry reference line is theta as the charge is moving like this like this like this its theta is changing so we can define uh, omega angular velocity as the rate of change of theta i have chosen this to be positive direction so at the initial moment this theta would be this theta would be like this that would be minus phi and at final moment when it will be here the theta would be from this line that would be plus phi so as particle is moving from uh, beginning to end the theta the variable theta would vary from minus minus phi to plus phi and at a general moment i will write the angular velocity omega is equal to d theta by dt uh, which is not constant we'll see so omega is equal to d theta by dt and uh, now the impulse on this particle so impulse on this particle net impulse is i is equal to delta p uh, I, I that is impulse momentum theorem i is delta p and that is the integration of f dt f is the net force and delta p is along this direction so if this is f so this is there would be one component along delta p and one component perpendicular to delta p and somewhere here at a symmetrical position here theta so the f would be like that one component would be like that and one component would be like that so you can see that if i take a pair pair two points pair at which the angular position is minus theta and plus theta the component of force perpendicular to delta p's impulse will add up to zero so obviously the net impulse is because of those components which are parallel to the reference line so uh, that that component if this is theta and this line is parallel to reference line so that is also theta so the component of this f parallel to the reference line along which uh, there is a net uh, momentum change that is f cos theta so the net impulse is because of this component so now i will write i is equal to magnitude of impulse is equal to uh, in place of f net i will write uh, component of f along uh, which there is a momentum change so that is f cos theta dt from minus infinity to plus infinity and at this moment this f is k q q product of charges divided by distance square and this is cos theta d theta and one more thing and uh, at the initial i told you what is the angular momentum at the initial moment the angular momentum is conserved 
about fixed nucleus that is l and that l is equal to at any moment at this moment at this moment uh, at any moment you can write angular momentum is equal to i omega i is the moment of inertia omega is the angular velocity so at this moment about this mass the moment of inertia is mr square so mr square omega and uh, r omega square is equal to r square omega is equal to then l by omega so l is conserved so the same l we can use at the for the initial moment at the initial moment angular momentum is m b v infinity uh, m v infinity into b so l divided by m is equal to b into v infinity so here r square omega i will put uh, b into v infinity i will take all the constant outside k capital q small q upon b into v infinity i'll take outside inside this is cos theta and uh, integrate from minus phi to plus phi so that integration will give me sin theta if i'll put the upper limit lower limit will get 2 sin theta so finally i will get k capital q small q divided by b v infinity into 2 sin theta so we got impulse by force method and delta p by simply the vector difference of the initial momentum and final momentum now we'll equate these two oh yeah so before that also uh, this uh, phi is equal to 90 minus alpha by 2 so cos phi would be sine alpha uh, that is a sine phi so uh, sine phi would be cos alpha by 2 so this thing this thing we obtained and i will just equate these two i is equal to delta p so i is equal to k capital q small q divided by b infinity into 2 cos alpha by 2 and delta p is equal to 2 mv infinity into sine alpha by 2 so equate this thing we'll get cot alpha and something like that and this i will abbreviate with t infinity that is the kinetic energy at infinite separation and just rearrange so we'll get b is equal to k q into small q uh, divide by 2 t infinity cot alpha by 2 so where t infinity i just told is a half mv infinity square kinetic energy at infinite separation so basically we've got the thing as we have to explain the terms now in classical that was the in in this case i had taken a general uh, positive charge particle in classical alpha decay uh, obviously i am saying uh, saying classical alpha scattering alpha particles used to bombard so the charge of the alpha alpha particle are nothing but the nucleus of helium so they have a uh, two proton two neutrons the neutron have no charges so the, their charge is 2e so in this expression that we had got uh, i will just write in place of this small q that was the charge of the bombarding particle is equal to 2e so we'll get uh, b is equal to k z e square uh, 1 z e square one minute the charge of the fixed nucleus suppose the element that i'm taking has a atomic number z the charge of the nucleus would be ZE so the capital Q I'll put ZE and the small q 2 e and putting that thing will get uh, K ZE square and this is alpha cot alpha by 2 into divide by T infinity and that is how the expression now we can use the same result for in case of gravitation there is a fix uh, there is a some fix some planet or some star and about that some comet just moves and crosses it and uh, it follows a high, uh, hyperbolic orbit same thing everything the same this is the same impact parameter this capital q i have replaced with the capital m the small q i have replaced with the small m and the angle of scattering is again or angle of deviation is the alpha so comparison of electrostatic and gravitation is in place of uh, k will write k and g a uh, charge will reduce capital q with the capital m and small q with the small m and that was the expression in the alpha scattering 
so here in place of k put g in place of capital q put m and this small m this small n this small m will get cancelled so we will get the impact parameter is equal to uh, gm by v infinity square cot and that is in fact uh, just uh, change it to alpha cot alpha by 2 so this is how we can get thank you